episode of Dick Barton, Special Agent. You may be interested to know that these Dick Barton books are avail available in leading bookshops now, priced 70 pence. Don't forget that you can see part four of Dick Barton's latest adventure tomorrow afternoon at 5.30. Next, Master Spy. Some games you can't play all by yourself. Sometimes you're gonna need to... Need to... Make your way Gotta live your life your way We can't help you find your name Some people like you Play the team with the Midland Midland team works a way to win You and Midland Bank, together we make a great team the lower fifth simply crave for them. They pay attention and behave for them. Can't resist them. Cadbury's cream eggs. Old maiden aunts, we might add, love them. From the yolk to the shell, the sheer excellence of them. Makes the confidence swell. Little boys with a feel for them. Are quite prepared to do a deal for them. Can't resist them. Cadbury's cream eggs. Can you? Our Wimpy Quarter Pounder really lives up to its name. A full quarter pound of beefy goodness, garnished with fresh crispy lettuce and topped with a generous dab of relish. Taste the pure beef in a Wimpy Quarter Pounder. So walk, walk, walk into the home of the hamburger, walk into a Wimpy today. Wimpy, it's the home of the hamburger. About this time of year, it's difficult for some of you cats to get out and do your daily business. Ordinary cat litters have been part of the answer, but new kitty litter has a unique time release deodorizer which actually absorbs smells instantly. Now there is an alternative to the grey outdoors, indoors. New kitty litter absorbs smells instantly. You see, the answer really does lie in the kitty litter. Seiko's advanced technology brings you, at a touch, the world's first memory bank calendar watch. It has an 80-year calendar and an amazing personal computer memory to remind you of important dates. This memorable new collection also includes a twin readout chronograph and an alarm chronograph with solar power, all from the pioneer of quartz, Seiko. Someday, all watches will be made this way. By the end of this assignment, three of these four special agents will have been eliminated by alien intelligence. By the end of this assignment, only one will have fulfilled his mission to become the Master Spy.
with Jenny Lee Wright as the inscrutable Miss Moneypacker, here now is the man in control, your resident spy master, William Franklin. Good evening. This cigarette lighter you could buy for under ten pounds in any good tobacconist. But this particular model, you couldn't buy for a thousand pounds anywhere in the world. That's because it's a miniature camera, and the foreign agent who brought it into this country has conveniently forgotten what he did with the film. And finding it before it falls into unfriendly hands is the mission facing our four special agents who've been brought into this because of their intellect and ingenuity. Money Packer, could we have the first agent in for screening, please? Certainly, Major. Agent Jim Gavin was born in Southern Ireland. He's married and he works as a motorsports consultant in West Sussex. <laughs> Agent Gavin, before you approach the table, would you read out the words on this card? French with tears. Now associate them with something you can either eat or drink. While you're doing that, we want you to take this camera and frame up the screen in your viewfinder. As you watch the screen, you will see a sequence of 10 consecutive pictures. One of those pictures is associated with the words you've just read. We want you to take a photograph of it. The pictures will be on the screen for two seconds and the first one's coming up right away. Well done, would you like to approach the desk and join the Major? <laughs> Hello, Gary, good to have you with us. I see from your dossier you crossed the Sahara four times. When did you last cross it? Uh, about two years ago, Major. Now, you just photographed what object? Onions. Can you remember the nine other objects that appeared before you? No way, but I can try. All right, try, go on. Well, well, across the Sahara, it shouldn't be too difficult. Oh, <laughs> well, the sand looks all the same. <laughs> there was a bunch of little cakes, and there were some grapes, and there was a bottle of Chianti, or maybe two bottles of Chianti. Yeah. Um, all right, that'll do to be going on with. Now, here's something else to test your mental alertness. Under the lid of one of these three cheese dishes is the photograph that you just took. Now, if it were put, uh, if the, you were to put the middle dish on the right-hand side and swap the other two over, mm. it would be on the left. Mm. Where is it now? It, could you just run through that one again? Yes, I could. Without touching them, if you were to put the middle dish on the right mm. and swap the other two over, mm. it would be on the left. Good. Where is it now? There. Pick it up and have a look. Uh-oh. You're totally right. And there, in fact, is the picture that you took of the onions. It's not a very good picture. It will be out in the course of the next 10 minutes. I think it will probably develop quite well. Would you like to report yes. back to the briefing bay? Thank you. <laughs> Agent John Kenny is a taxi driver. He's married, he has three children, and he comes from Manchester. <laughs> Agent Kenny, before you join uh, the Major, would you like to read out the words on this card? Some like it black. Now associate them with something you can either eat or drink. While you're doing that, I want you to pick up this camera and frame the screen in the viewfinder. As you're looking at the screen, you will see 10 consecutive pictures. One of them will be related to the words you have just read. We want you to photograph it. Each picture will be on the screen for two seconds, and the first one's coming up right away. Thank you very much. Would you like to approach the desk and sit down in front of the Major? 
Hello, Kenny. Good to have you with us. Now, you were a qualified engineer in copper and other metals like that and decided you liked the open road, so you became a taxi driver. Yes, Major. Uh, w what really actually sort of fertilised that feeling? Well, I just wanted to break out on my own. Right. Now, of the ten objects that you've just see, you seen, you photographed one. What was it? Grapes. Grapes. Specifically grapes. Can you name any of the other nine objects that were left? Gatto. Um, a coffee percolator. Yeah. Um, steak. Yes. Um, right, I'll ask you this. Why did you photograph grapes? Because you get black grapes. Well, in fact, it was a Kona coffee set. But here's something else to test your mental alertness. Under the lid of these three, uh, one of these three cheese dishes is the photograph that you just took. Now, without touching them, if you were to put the middle dish to the right and then swap the other two over, what you're looking for would be under the left. Where is it now? In the middle. In the middle? Lift up the middle and have a look. No, that was very reasonable you not to ask to hear that twice. Try looking under the right-hand one. And there it is. What is it actually? It's oh, it's a bowl of fruit. I see. Right, thank you. Would you like to join your colleague in the briefing bay? Our next agent is Lynn McFarland. She comes from London, but she works in Maidenhead as a publisher. <laughs> agent McFarland, before you approach the desk, we'd like you to read out the words on that card. From various branches. Now associate them with something you can either eat or drink. While you're doing that, we want you to take this camera and frame up the screen in the viewfinder. As you watch the screen, you will see a series of ten photographs. One will relate to the words you've just read. We want you to photograph it, and the first one's coming up right away. Excellent. Would you like to join the major at the desk? Hello, McFarland. You publish books. I do. Now, you were obviously dealing with uh, writers, you've got a lot of psychological problems. But what sort of things do they write about? I mean, is there a mainstream that your writers come under the heading? Yes, they're textbook pub, um, authors. They're writing for kids in, in colleges. Of the ten things you saw on the screen, you photographed one. What was it? It was a bowl of fruit. Can you name any of the other nine objects? Yes, there was some chicken. Yeah. Um, there were some onions. Um, there was some bread. Um, oh, bread. Yes, lamb chops or cutlets. That's steak. it. Yes, go on. Fine. It was indistinct. Um, right. Why did you photograph the uh, bowl of fruit? Because the clue was from various branches, and presumably most of the that fruit hangs on things. is absolutely correct. <laughs> now, something else to test your mental alertness. Under the lid of one of these three cheese dishes is the photograph that you just took. Now, without touching them, if you were to put the uh, middle dish on the right and swap the other two over, it would be on the left. Where is it now? There. Lift it up and have a look. You're absolutely right. There was great certainty about you, and I think... That might eventually resemble a bowl of fruit. Well done. Would it's you like to join your colleague? Agent Henry Ford was born in Burton on Trent. He's 42 and he describes himself as a writer. <laughs> Agent Ford, before you approach the desk, would you just read what is on that card? Viva Italia. Now, will you associate those words with something you can either eat or drink? While you're doing that, I want you to pick up this camera and frame the screen in the viewfinder. Good job. Okay. While you're looking at the screen, you will see a sequence of ten consecutive pictures. One will relate to the words you've just read. 
We want you to photograph it. Fine. Would you like to approach the desk? Thank you very much and join the lady. Now, Ford, while Money Packer is prizing that picture out of that greedy machine, she's managed to do that, we'll talk. I've been through your dossier and it's quite unique because even if I hold it up to the light, dissolve it in water, I can find nothing on it. What actually are you trying to hide from us? Because we're the people who do the hiding normally. Yes, take your time before you answer. You wish to know what my profession is? Sir. Not necessarily. I'd rather know things about you as a character, your interests. Limerick, sir. Right. Uh, could you give us any evidence to um, evidence? back this up? Uh, not immediately, sir. With a little bit of um, warning, perhaps I might be able I to. I see. Sir. So far we are probably in the world of fantasy, but we'll stick with that for a moment. You just saw ten objects up there and you photographed one. What was it? It was a bottle of wine, sir. Yes, I see. Now, can you name the other nine objects that you saw? I saw... Or any of them? Um, onions, cheese, chops. Um, I don't think I... I, I now, that'll do to be going on. That'll be doing to go on with. Uh, why did you f photograph the bottle of Chianti? Um, because Chianti is an Italian wine. Yes, and what were you given to make you think of Italian? Viva Italia. Absolutely correct. Now, here's something else to test your mental alertness. Underneath one of these three cheese dishes is the photograph that uh, I think just got strangled, but which you took. And uh, I want you to assume, without touching them, if you were to put the middle dish on the right and swap the other two over, your photograph would be under the one on the left. Where is it now? It would be under that. A one. good gambler. I like to see it. Lift the lid. Do I have to yes, lift you that have to oh. lift the lid? <laughs> <laughs> Exposure is all. Can I use two hands, sir? Yes. Oh, and there right, it is. Yes. The most incredible picture oh, of a bottle of yes. Very oh, good. Well done. Pasha Vottawa is shaking. <laughs> Would you like to join your colleagues back in the briefing bay? Thank you. Right. Now to the night's assignment. Money Packer. Major. The man you're looking at is Klaus van Klosch. According to his passport, he's a ship's officer. Three weeks ago, he came ashore from a Liberian freighter. When he returned to Tilbury to board his ship, he was 25 minutes too late. It had already sailed for Panama. This is not an unusual situation, but uh, as is standard procedure with the new rules, the Immigration Department reported this situation to the special branch who traced von Klosch's activities to this boarding house, which happens to be two and a half miles away from this atomic research center. Now the secrets of British nuclear research are amongst our most closely guarded. So when Van Klosch was found wandering through the uh, process data department, the chase was on. It ended at 10.45 last night at a fashionable bistro in Highgate. 12 hours of interrogation produced nothing, but we do know that he photographed some highly secret machinery what happened to the film is still a mystery. Your mission is to find that film before it's picked up by an accomplice. Meanwhile, the nation's security hangs by a thread. Money Packer will give you the details of your cover allocation. Thank you, Major. Money Packer. All available intelligence suggests that Van Klosch entered the Bordino's restaurant last night with the missing microfilm. The theory is that before he made his escape through the kitchen at the back, he managed to hide the missing microfilm somewhere on the premises. Its recovery is bound to be attempted by a fellow agent. So to preempt this situation, you will each assume the cover role of restaurateur. It is hoped that the overnight study you've made of this subject will have equipped you with enough knowledge to perform your duties very, con very, very convincingly. But first, you must convince us. Would you all turn to the right? And Agent Gavin, please join the Major. All right, Gavin. 
five questions to be answered as rapidly as possible. Even if you give a wrong answer, you can improve your ratings with a convincing bluff. Why wouldn't you store rhubarb in a galvanized container? Uh, is it uh, there's a chance of poison because the rhubarb will react with the galvanized. Absolutely correct. What is the name of the service where the waiter prepares and serves a meal from a trolley? Uh, Garidon. Absolutely correct. Which herb would your chef use in preparing turtle soup? Uh, basil. Correct. It's a potato. It's oval. It's slightly pink with shallow eyes and has a creamy white flesh. What's his name? Oh, it's got to be one or two. A chance for, um, it's got to be either Epicure or Redskin. A chance for uh, Epicure. I should leave them both alone. It's a King Redskin. Edward. Oh. <laughs> it is a, a royalty potato. A diner complains about the poulet de grand on your menu. Exactly what is he taking you to task about? Oh, well, spring chicken. Absolutely correct. Agent Gavin has answered four questions correctly, which has improved his rating by 20, plus a confidence is one, a total rating of 21. Gavin, would you like to return to base? Agent Kenny, would you take the chair? Right, Kenny. If you were granted a refreshment house license, what would you now be entitled to do? I'd have to apply for a extended license between, I'd say, for 10 a.m. till 5 in the morning. 10 a.m. till 5 in the morning. That'll give you five hours off altogether. Now, 10 it's a trade. Ah, yes, it's just a trade between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m., I must say. Now, when buying prime beef, what do you look for in the bones? Um, I'd look for the softness and small bones. Well, well you're half there. I'm afraid there's more gristle present around the joints. As we get older, our cartilages take a bit of a thrashing. True. Yes, Bank think about it. That's right. Why are artichokes in season? I mean, when are artichokes in season? <laughs> um, between, um, I'd say February, September to February. I'm afraid it's October to June. I'm afraid my question was slightly misleading. misleading. Yes, it was misleading. You're absolutely right. Monosodium glutamate is widely used as a food additive. What's its function? to um, give flavour. Absolutely correct. Of what does mocha coffee consist? Um, half cream. Yes. And half coffee. Cream. Cream. Thick cream. I'm afraid it is actually chocolate and it's topped by marshmallow to be exact. Agent Kenny has scored uh, five out of possible 25 plus five for confidence which is a total rating of 10. Hi, right, Kenny, would you return to base? <laughs> McFarlane, will you take the chair? McFarlane, what would be the biggest disadvantage to serving your customers salmonella? <laughs> you can't actually do it, obviously, but it would make them very ill indeed. It would give them food poisoning. So the disadvantage would be that they wouldn't come back? Indeed. I see. If you employed a sommelier, what would his duties be in the restaurant? To serve wine. Correct. As a restaurateur, how would you buy Swedes? Um, they come in sacks, in 26 kilos. Sacks. That is absolutely correct. In mixing a cake, your pastry cook adds an ingredient which was originally the fruit of a tropical climbing orchid. What's its name? Vanilla. Correct. Give me the name of the hardest known cheese. Parmesan. Absolutely correct. Agent McFarland has answered five questions correctly and improved a rating by 25. <laughs> would you like to return to base, McFarland? Ford, will you take the chair? Well, Ford, I hope your legislation is up to scratch. The planning and operation of your kitchen is regulated by which government legislation? Uh, food Hygiene 1970 General. Excellent. In restaurant terminology, what is a station? The station is consists of between... Uh, the briefing was six tables, but it could be as few as four tables, in four and six tables. I will accept table. your briefing of six. Oh, you thank you. <laughs> if one of your waiters was serving a customer with La Pamplemousse, what course would the customer be on? Either the first, yes, the, the first, because it would be grapefruit. That is absolutely correct. Between which dates is pheasant in season? Pheasant is in season between, excuse me, sir, um, the 1st of October and the 1st of December. You haven't been at the pheasant, have you? <laughs> I beg your pardon. No, that's quite correct, your answer. What's the most common criticism of cooking in a heavy-duty aluminium saucepan? 
heavy duty aluminum soil, it, it is said to um, stain the sources a little, make them a little grey. Not an attractive sight. Not. An attractive and you're quite sight. right. Agent Ford has improved his rating by 25 out of a possible 25. Would you like to join your colleagues back in the meeting bay? Now, if you'll turn and face Money Packer, we'll have the latest readout of the mission ratings. Thank you, Major. Yes, the ratings so far at this critical stage. Agent McFarland leads the field with 44. Agent Ford has 43. Agent Gavin has 39. And that sound tells me, I'm afraid, Agent Kenny, with 18, must be eliminated from tonight's mission. Oh. Bad luck, Kenny. Well done to have come so far. If you report to Money Packer, she will give you something for your devotion to duty. The department would like you to accept this rather superb pair of binoculars. They not only allow you to see things in close-up, but they have a built-in radio, so you can listen to things in close-up too. Thank you very much for your worthy efforts on this mission. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Three agents are left to complete the mission, but before they can go into the field, they must penetrate the disguise of this well-known undercover agent. If you think you know who it is, you'll be a couple of minutes ahead of us when we return with this assignment of the Master Spy. Find out whether you qualify for a postal vote in the forthcoming elections. See the newspapers for this advertisement. It tells you all you need to know about postal votes. Make sure you read it. Vote for your life! The butcher is coming! He's eating everything in his pack! This is the end of civilization as we know it. Not quite, Professor. It's a long shot, but might just work. Come back, Chuck. Mm. Chew it. Even chewier than a 15-story block of flats. Think of your body. Think of the energy it uses and the nourishment it needs every day. And naturally, you pick a proper breakfast food. Alpen. Delicious Alpen. Just add milk to all that wheat, oats, hazelnuts, fruits, brown sugar. It not only tastes good, it does a body good as well. Alpen. New Listament mouthwash introduces the Sloosh. After you've brushed your teeth, Sloosh with just half a capful of new antiseptic Listament. It reaches where your toothbrush can't, and you can feel how fresh your breath is. The Listament Sloosh. It works, and it tastes as good as it works. When you're wallpapering, slip-ups can be very expensive. Polycell wallpaper pastes. Did we ever let you down? Me? No. Always on the phone, that boy. Who is it this time? His brother. Jerry? No, Albert in America. America? <laughs> yes. I'm... Ringing America is nowhere near as expensive as you might think. Dialing on your own phone on cheap rate, it will only cost you £1.85 for three minutes. Come on, you've been on there quite long enough. Hold on, Albert. I think that wants a word. Oh, stupid boy. It doesn't cost much to keep in touch. Intelligence has been brought to us by an undercover agent who, because he has a well-known face, has had to adopt an elaborate disguise. Our three surviving agents will need their penetrative powers to tell me his real name. 
Good evening, Agent X. Good evening. You have 30 seconds to question him. You can ask him as many questions as you like. Every time you get an affirmative, you will get a bonus point. If you give me the wrong name, you'll lose five points. Give me the right name and you'll gain five points. He's all yours. Are you in show business? Yeah. Mostly television? Not necessarily. Theater? Films? All kinds. Do you travel around the country? Sometimes. Or do you work mainly in London? Usually. Do you play character parts like this normally? No. Do you have a beard? Not at all. Are you bald? No. Nope. Our old experienced agent has shown a pair of clean wheels to our young contenders. Would you like to stand up, disrobe and show who you really are? It's very good. It is indeed, of course, Larry Adler. Oh. <laughs> now, Larry, have you brought uh, photographic yes. intelligence with you? Yes, I have. I'd like you to all turn around, face the screen, and commit everything you see and hear to memory. I'm parked at the edge of a private London airport, and here's why. Ben Clush's passport shows he's been to Sherbrooke three times these past four months, and I found out by phone that a charter plane from Sherbrooke was due at 9.30 a.m. It landed eight minutes early. It turned out I wasn't the only one interested. Anarchy International knows of Van Cloche's capture because this car is owned by Vernon Stockwell. He works for them. Someone wants to get that microfilm before we do, so obviously it's a contest. The plane taxied up to the car. I just waited. One person got out, and on the other side, so I couldn't see him. And I, I can't run very well and hold a heavy camera at the same time, so I just couldn't get a good view of the man from Cherbourg. I tried to, but he was in a hurry. He got in the car, and in no time at all, he was, he was off. I tried to follow them. They were driving towards London, but twice they lost me. However, at Alexandra Street in East Finchley, I did get a break. There was Stockwell's car, parked outside an empty shop. My man's in the flat upstairs. I don't know his name. I have absolutely no idea what he looks like. I do know one thing, that at eight past 10, I really blew it. My film ran out. Hmm. Thank you, Larry, for that very detailed, albeit uh, slightly abbreviated film. Now, we're going to meet later as part of our assignment, aren't we? Yes. Thank you very much for being with us up to now. See you in a moment. Now, let's see how much of that you managed to take in. Gavin, according to Van Klosch's passport, how many times has he visited Cherbourg in the last four months? Three times. Correct. In whose name was the estate car registered? Don't know. Bernard Stockwell. Agent X followed the estate car to East Finchley. In what street did he find it parked? Alexandra Street. That is correct. McFarland, at what time had the French charter plane been cleared to arrive at the airfield? 8.30. 9.30. At what time did it actually touch down? I don't know. 9.22. The first thing we saw on the film was a clump of thistles. Before we saw the plane land, what else did we see? The um, control tower. That is absolutely correct. Ford, when the plane taxied up to the car, did it appear to do so from the right or left? Uh, it, it came up to the left. That is correct. When the man from Cherbourg got out of the plane, did he use the door on the port side? No, on the far side, on the starboard side. No, it was on the port side, i.e. the left. At what time did Agent X discover that the film had run out of his camera? At eight minutes past ten. That is absolutely correct. Now, having questioned the staff at uh, Bordino's Bistro about Van Klosch's behavior immediately prior to his capture, one significant fact has emerged. Just before the special branch arrived, Van Klosch made a hurried telephone call, and one of the waiters heard him make a statement on the phone which he repeated three times. Every Friday, go early down Crompton Avenue, Croydon, for entertainment. 
it took our decoding computer all of 25 seconds to discover that by giving it a musical connotation, the sentence formed the first line of an old-time song. This sentence is obviously telling our man from Cherbourg where Van Klosch has hidden the missing microfilm. Now, if we take the first letter of each word, as it appears on the diatonic scale, we get this. E, F, G, E, D, C, A, C, F, E. Do you recognize it by any hopeful chance? What? Do you recognize it? I'll tell you, it's my beautiful rendition of Nellie Dean. So remember that. Now then, we believe this is a code within a code. And we want to carry out an experiment to help you break down this code. Would you like to approach the table with me and observe all the objects on it? With the help of our celebrated undercover agent, Mr. Adler, who will supply the music, we want you to connect the objects with a word which is in the title or the first line of some very well-known songs. If you don't, it will be open to the other two agents. So it's on your own at first. So, Agent Gavin, here is your first musical clue. <laughs> Good one. Yep. I'm afraid you're wrong. What? You have still got some f some seconds left, so if you want to make a... You have five seconds to decide which is the correct object. Okay, you've lost it. Ford, McFarland, you have five seconds to find the correct object. Absolutely right, of oh, course. Okay. Agent McFarland, roll out the barrel. That was the one. So, Agent McFarland, it's now your first choice, and here's your first mus musical clue. <laughs> Okay, five seconds. No. Nope. Okay, Ford, Gavin, you have five seconds from now. I didn't recognize the tune, Alfred. Oh, that. Oh, you see, he oh, did. Good. You need hands. Oh, wow. And of course, the clock has no hands, oh. so it needs hands. Very good. Oh. Agent Ford, now it's your chance first. Here's your first musical cue. Oh. Last night. Five seconds. Who were you with last night? Dynamite. Oh, watch it. Wrong. Agent Ford, Agent Gavin. Right, it's that. Your choice. Five seconds. Oh, I wanted to tell you the, the title of the first line. Under the oh, pale oh, yeah. moon. Hey, oh, that's terrible. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Under the pale moon. Mr. Adler, thank you for your virtuous performance. Thank you very you much. You brought back some very charming memories. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, I bet that pale moon does have a built-in rasp attached to it, doesn't it? But uh, after that musical diversion, perhaps we could have the latest readout of the mission ratings. Certainly, Major. At this very critical stage in the mission, Agent Ford is in the lead with 63. Agent Gavin has 55. And very close indeed, Agent McFarland with 54. Must I, I'm afraid, be eliminated from tonight's oh. assignment. McFarland, what a super you, battle. What bad luck as you were going so well. But there always has to be, I'm afraid, a loser. But I think if you report to Money Packer, you won't feel the loss is quite so great. The department would like you to accept this rather super. It's the very first cassette loading single lens reflex camera. It has a zoom lens and also an automatic aperture. So it makes for photography really very easy and very efficient. Thank you for your marvellous effort on this mission. We Thank thoroughly you. enjoyed you. Lovely thing. Thank, Thank you. you. Two agents left to complete the mission from which only one will return. Now I want you to bear this in mind and listen very carefully, Ford. We have had some intelligence that's just come through. And that is that the man from Cherbourg has not been so far visualized. We haven't actually seen him, but we know from the telephone calls he's made from his flat to a takeaway cafeteria that he likes fish and some Italian dishes, but not veal or pork. It's essential that you remember those, because that's how you'll identify him. For your eyes only to be read and inwardly digested. Good luck to both of you. and we'll get out of business. Time's running against us. How are we going? Well, Bardino's Bistro has just opened and the first customers are already seated. As you'll see in a moment, our two agents...
Germans are already in their act active roles of joint proprietors. Good. The man from Schoenberg must know he needs to act quickly, so the chances are he's already at one of the tables. Fade up the bugging equipment so we can hear what's going on. Certainly, sir. Wait, what's this, what's this dish here, veal savoyard? Uh, that's a uh, speciality of the house, sir, but I'm afraid it's off. Oh, it's off. Oh dear. There may be one portion left. I'll just check oh, in the just kitchen. Hang on. Now, does that sort of thing appeal to you? Oh, no, no, no. It is far too rich for me. I think I might have something with a salad. Ah. I think I would like to start with your fish pate. How about you, my dear? Uh, what's the soup of the day? The soup of the day, madam, is brown Windsor. Ah. Italian stuff. Ah. In that case, uh, I'll have the honeydew melon. Oh, so you have one fish pate and one melon. One, uh, yes. And just, I think just, I would like yes, to follow. Uh, just, sorry, uh, just one minute. So fish, fish pate, fish, melon. Pate. And to follow uh, a minute steak with some nice vegetables. Um, uh, yes. Uh, with some nice vegetables. Nice. And how's the cannelloni? Uh, I'm sorry? The cannelloni. Oh, the cannelloni. Wonderful, my dear. Wonderful. Well, maybe I should think of my figure. <laughs> That's not necessary, my dear. Have what you fancy. <laughs> maybe you have uh, spare ribs, huh? Yes, indeed, sir. We have. Uh, no, no. I tell you. Um, I settled for uh, egg mayonnaise to begin, and then I have uh, the escalope, uh, no, uh, the chicken supai. Well, I'll have uh, potted shrimps, and let's see, I'll have a scallop of veal to follow. Oh, and will you uh, bring me the wine with this, please? Certainly, sir. Okay. Uh, do you mind if I change the fish pate to the smoked salmon? Uh, no, not at all. We'll probably do the same. And I do um, have the cannelloni. Fish pate, smoked... Smoked salmon. Smoked salmon. Oh, no, no, no. I'd like to change the cannelloni to lasagna. Oh, and I'll settle for the spaghetti carbonara. Oh. Uh, and I'll set. Um, I'll stay with the, the melon to start. Spaghetti. Uh, yes, spaghetti. Uh, so it's two melons to begin with. No, 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 no. no, no, no. I'm, I'm having the melon. You're and having, I'm having the melon. Spaghetti carbonara. Carbonara. Yes. And smoked salmon. Smoked uh, carbonara. Yes, you change the smoked salmon. Yes. And smoked. lasagna. Smoked salmon and lasagna. That's it. Thank you so much. Uh, not, not, uh, not uh, cannelloni. No, lasagna. So I see one cannelloni, one lasagna. Um, no, I want spaghetti carbonara. Spaghetti please. carbonara. With a me yes, melon to start. With a melon, melon to start. To start. <laughs> Two melons to start. No minutes later. No minutes. No, 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 no minutes. No. no, I just want the spaghetti no. carbonara, please. Agent Ford, what are the orders you have? Uh, they're rather confused, madam. Um, well, just, just give me the final result of their orders. Well, hopefully this is the final result of one uh, uh, smoked salmon yes. and one melon, the smoked salmon for the gentleman, the melon for the lady, yes. uh, one cannelloni for the gentleman, yes. and for the lady, one spaghetti carbonara. Very good. Now, Agent Gavin, have you remembered what your second course is worth? Uh, no, because I think I've discovered the agent, and I rather got so excited about that, I forgot about the main course. Okay, you just, you just hold fire a moment. <laughs> agent Ford, you have the highest current rating, so you can go first, and will you nominate who you think the accomplice is? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, what you can you tell us who you think the accomplice is? I think, yeah, I, uh, <coughs> spend your pardon, madam, I think, I think the accomplice is the small cannelloni, madam. The small cannelloni? <laughs> I'm sorry, madam. Who does the small cannelloni belong to? Uh, the Anyone small... in particular? Uh, yes, the small cannelloni, the gentleman on the left of my toe, with a rather attractive lady, madam. Absolutely correct. OK. Ah, where is it? Miss Stewart, madam. Oh, oh thank you. Sound, sir. Um, could I have a little sugar with my melon? A please? little sugar? And I would like the pepper and the wine. The pepper and the wine, yes, sir. <coughs> Agent Ford, will you come back into the kitchen? Okay, now have you learned anything else from your accomplice? What has he said to you? I'm afraid I missed it, sir. Okay, Agent Gavin, what did he say? Well, I, th I think I know where the microfilm is. Oh, uh, oh, right. Tell me where you think it is. Well, it's in a pepper mill. Why do you think it's in a pepper mill? Well, he did ask for it, and um, I probably should have got it from the kitchen. It's undoubtedly a special one, and the song Nelly Dean talks Nelly, about... Uh, go to the pepper mills. Now, Gavin, if you changed over the two end ones, then swap the middle one with the one on the left, it would be immediately to the right of the one that was originally in the middle. Yes, sir. I've got so that. So which one is it? Gavin's choice. Wrong, Agent Wrong. Gavin. Agent Ford, your choice. Oh, damn. Uh... Correct, Agent Ford. Your 
Project Eight and Ford. Right, return to base with that microfilm and the part of the Agent Gavin. Agent Gavin, we're sorry you were picked at the post, but as a reward for all your excellent efforts, we'd like you to accept this top quality home entertainment centre. Thank, thank you. Effort. Thank you very much. Well, Paul, I think you, uh, thank you. Yes, you justified that uh, the dis uh, discl undisclosed information on your dossier and have truly earned the mantle of the master spy. Oh, thank you. You. Money packer. <laughs> You've you. also earned the department's oh. very grateful appreciation, plus this rather splendid total uh, stereo unit. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> it only remains for me to say thank you for being with us, and we hope you'll join us next time around for another assignment of The Master Spy. Thank you.